Hello everybody, there we are again with Awake TV Network and today we have a very special guest. She will tell us all about anxiety. Uh, she's from Spain, but she is a Dutch, a German, no, sorry, a Belgium lady. And it's Annelies van Rijkenpors, also from Netherlands. And welcome uh, Claudia to be with us today. And I will introduce myself. I'm Ofke Tekens from Netherlands. Uh, I'm a Jungian therapist and a transformational teacher. I'm a Jungian uh, a psychologist. I work with archetypes and that's what we're talking about today, the money archetypes. And next to me is Annelies van Rijkenborsel. Will you introduce yourself, Annelies? Yes, I'm Annelies from the Netherlands and I help female entrepreneurs to break through their money blocks with using the money archetypes of Kinnick, uh, both created. They are in this uh, in this little box, and there are 32 cards, um, which in which we will work also in this show together with Claudia. And this theme is about fear and anxiety, and Claudia knows how to bust your fear, uh, since many entrepreneurs um, deal with that. So, Claudia, maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience. Yes. Hi. I'm so happy to be here, be part of this uh, great series. Um, so my name is Claudia. I, um, I'm from Belgium. I live in the south of Spain and I moved here because of my health. It was one of the brave decisions I took on my healing journey from fibromyalgia. I am one of those many women and some men that, that are pleasing and helping everyone else, putting everybody else's needs in, in front of my own and pushing through, living in high stress, high fear, high anxiety. And of course, at one point you crash, obviously. <laughs> Your body's not meant to be in that fear state 24 seven. And um, that was for me back in 2014, a big wake up call. Yeah, so we hear it. Like it back then. <laughs> yeah, we hear clearly hear the servant. Huh? One of those money archetypes is the servant. And what you see huh? yeah. always pleasing others and not thinking about yourself. And that it was causing a, a big crash. Absolutely. And it's a very hard one to shake. Yes. So, can you tell more about it, about this journey you had? Yeah, what happened? Yes. I, um, I actually totally crashed. Um, <clears throat> beginning of July in 2014 and um, my life actually ended the way I've, I known it, I've known it till that point. Um, I would never be able to go back there and never want to go back there either mm -hmm. because it was a really unhealthy situation. Um, living in this servant state pleasing everyone, um, being in this high fear and high anxiety, it just takes over your life. And by consequence, I burned out my complete pro uh, body. I exhausted every cell that was living inside of me and there was nothing left. And that was actually the best moment because there was nothing left for me to give. No matter how hard I tried, I tried even that first year or those two, first two years, I kept trying to be the old person, mm. but I couldn't anymore. My body was saving me from doing that unhealthy behavior. And what, I, what happened was at the, almost the end of another horrible cold winter back in Belgium, that I had spent months in agonizing pain and exhaustion, mm. that I woke up one morning really early and I thought to myself, no way that I'm going to do this for another two months, just having no life at all. And yeah, looking at the future, I couldn't see myself do that for another year or another 10 years. Oh my goodness. And in that moment, I took really a very first brave decision, surrounded by so much fear and anxiety. But that one split second in that moment, I was really, really brave. Mm -hmm. And I decided I was going to go on a holiday to Spain. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And did you get a message or something or just it was your own decision? It was 
maybe you can call it a download, maybe you can call it a big inspiration, maybe you can call it my, my soul talking to me. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's a mix of all those things that finally spoke to me and made it really crystal clear that that was the new That's direction right. to yeah. go for me. Special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did. Wow. I did. And within two days in Spain, I took my next really brave decision, and that was to move to Spain. <laughs> wow. And to stay there. Yeah. Yes. And you still are there, isn't it? I still am. Yeah. Wow. And that's good for your illness, isn't it? The sun. And yeah. The yeah. It yeah. was both really good for my health, mm. just the climate, the, 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 hot, the hot weather, um, mm. but as well, the distance. Basically, we're here 2,000 kilometers from the sources of all my fear and anxiety and pleasing. And if we wouldn't have had internet, I would have healed in a couple of weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. But because we keep connecting with people through internet, through messenger, through all kinds of calls, yes. you kind of put the distance between yourself and the root cause, which is actually mm -hmm. inside you, but at that time you still think it's over here. <laughs> and um, it keeps coming back to you, as yeah. it always does. It's a kind of connector who cannot yeah. cut the cords. <clears throat> no. no, it took me a really long time to cut that cord. Mm -hmm. Because that was my comfort zone. No matter how awful it was, and how, how much I felt to get out of it, that was my comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah. Living in that stress and fear and trying to please people and, and get their love and their appreciation and their respect. But it was all it was all a fake because I wasn't being true to myself. I wasn't presenting the real me. Mm. And they were responding to that fake person. Mm. So you're you're stuck in that whole vicious circle mm. that keeps repeating itself and you want to step out. But the fear keeps pulling you back and then it turns into anxiety and that pulls you back and yeah it takes a lot of healing to get out of that and what happens exactly to really step out of this comfort zone that you said okay now the cords are cut um i actually reinvented my life so that's what i called my coaching business in the end reinvent your life coaching because that's what i did i reinvented and changed my life on every aspect of my life on nutrition on sleep on dealing with the fear with the anxiety with the pleasing um daring to say no oh my goodness that was huge <laughs> yeah because you were not used to yes yeah i don't think i, I ever said the no. name the name of your company reinvent your life yep <laughs> great yes so you make a diamond of your own struggle, your own pain, your... Yeah, I turned Wonderful. that whole journey mm -hmm. into my new future. And the new future that gives me the independence I was looking for all that time. Mm -hmm. And that is an, a thing I see with many women in a similar situation, whether they ended up in a chronic illness or in fear That's or in all those yeah. odds. Yeah. Yeah, unhelpful so, re relationships yeah. that they think they're stuck at. Mm -hmm. um, it's that lack of control or that perceived lack of control of your own life. Mm -hmm. So you learn people how they can control their life after this anxiety, maybe? Does you yes. have to make a formula um, for that? Or? We take a really close look at your life. Mm -hmm and have a look at all the aspects who are you who do you think you are how do you behave what does your day look like mm -hmm. does that give you energy or take energy mm -hmm. and usually it takes a lot of energy oh yeah does it make you happy does it energize you um what's your environment like what do you look at do you have friends? What kind of friends? Do you have a relationship? How is that relationship affecting you? Mm -hmm. What's the relationship with your parents in the past and now? What are you doing for money? 
are you home or you're living on a, an illness pay or a pension like I did for so many years? Mm -hmm. um, or are you working? Did you maybe get fired? Are you looking for another job? Are you looking to start your own company? And many people want to start their own company because they like the freedom and the independence and finally be sure. able to and then decide they themselves. Need yes. But, but Claudia, but so do, they, do they fly to Spain to, to meet you or you only work online? Well, I so far I've only worked online, but once, well, the idea was uh, from the beginning that I would have do retreats here in the yeah. south of Spain. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, and then we yeah. would do little um, little hubs with uh, a small group of people, and we really yeah. make it intimate. Mm. And then, yeah, we kind of share experiences, grow together, mm. cry together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All over, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I really hear as well is the inventor, isn't it? Really, the the to reinvent your life, but also inventing for people how to change their life. Yeah. So that you're really, yes. Yeah. It, it really comes quite easy to me to both find the pain points and help you figure out what other options you have. And really exactly. invent stuff, yeah. think out of the box, um, open your horizon. Yeah, and maybe what you experience yourself as well is when you are so deep, so low, that that's, you know, that there are actually are no other options anymore, that in fact all the options are open again, you know, because yeah. you Your cannot world go... Is getting smaller and smaller exactly. and smaller. And all yes. you can see and think and feel and focus on is being ill. Yeah. And that's why I add that new focus of starting and creating your own business. Mm -hmm. whether you go ahead with it or not mm. but just to shift that focus from only focusing on what's wrong with your life into a new future i yeah. like that because the archetypes do that too they go from the positive side it can be your helpers to help you with this anxiety so your qualities your skills your talents this archetypes this inner dream team can help you very good with this anxiety i think to uh, start this new life what do you think i completely agree mm -hmm. <laughs> I, are you aware of yourself of a few archetypes of yourself your talents well i had uh, a brief introduction to the art i heard that yeah great and uh, it was very inspiring i find it fascinating yes and i'd love to learn more it's a new world it's the world of the unconsciousness yeah Yes. Right. And I really love how you get to connect to parts of you that you didn't know you had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they probably were suppressed all your life yeah. for a big part of your life. Oh, yes. Yeah. In yeah. my case as well. Um, yes. Writing, dancing, being creative, uh, speaking up. Right. Those were all shut down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were, you were not allowed to. No, yeah. no, no. In your childhood, I do a lot of inner childhood also as a therapist and see, yeah, what is locked down in your, hey, your treasure box is closed. Mm -hmm. When you're growing older, you get stuck. Yeah, the, the treasure box will open and you will unfold your, yeah, what you have suppressed your whole life. So mm -hmm. to reinvent, I, I like very much that word of your mm -hmm. company. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It really spoke to me. It yeah. was like, what am I about? It's about reinventing. Reinventing, yeah. yeah. And everybody, in fact, can reinvent their life. When you're not happy or whatever, when you're stuck, you always have the possibility to reinvent your life. Yeah. Yeah. And the weird thing is that the three of us now are quite excited about that word. Yeah. But I've had a lot of people react very strongly to that fact, just because they're totally stuck in their life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're really, really convinced that their life is perfect. Nothing has to change. And they just need a couple of techniques to yeah, fix. Yeah. Just to fix it. That's the yeah. yeah. I want to fix it quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I also like the word revitalization. I think that's all about this energy has been gone away when you're burnt out or have this anxiety or fear. You're not connected. You're not aligned anymore with yourself, is it? 
when you have such no. much fear. No. You're just a floating head out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> totally disconnected from your body, from your soul, from everything. Can you tell the listeners what is, maybe you can, it's a secret, a bit of your recipe, what you're doing with, with this guy. You ask them questions. And do you have uh, steps you take with them? Or is a special program you use? Or is every program different because the problem is different? I'm interested as a therapist just to share to my clients too. It's, of course, it depends mm. what people want, mm. no, what they think they want. <laughs> yeah. And figuring out and getting to the point of, of knowing what they really want is, mm. of course, something that will take a bit of time. Mm. Um, mostly, we kind of focus on what's top of mind in that moment. Mm. it's and about mind setting i think too yeah Change it's your mind reframe it yes mm -mm. um i'm actually training to be a havening practitioner and that's one of the techniques i use to get into the subconscious of calming down the amygdala the whole fear system and anxiety mm -hmm. um and really in a gentle way get to those root causes and heal them mm -hmm. and the way i explain it to my clients is actually there normally you have a body and you can compare it to a bucket yes and the bucket fills up during the day and, and with life happening and then you sleep or you work through it and it uh, it reduces again mm. But most people who come to me have a bucket that's filled to the last drip. Yeah. And it's usually dripping over and flowing over and they're never dealing with it. Mm. And I was just the same. I just kept pushing through. Then I had a big cry or I, or I had to stay home for a week. And then I just continued in the same way. Mm. Because you learned that. It's a belief. You have to go like this and go on. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's also a su survival mechanism. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be strong. Yes. And you have to be everyone strong. else and perform and not complain. Yes. Mask and smile and go yeah. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm so, interested in that evening. Alice told me about, but we were not there yet. Maybe you want to share something about it because it's new for me. I've never heard about it. Yeah, and I think for many of our watchers, yeah. it's, the, yeah. it's new evening. I also mm -hmm. never heard about it. So yeah. it's interesting that you explain what it is. Please. Well, it's a really, really gentle technique that was originally developed to heal uh, big trauma, big childhood trauma. And uh, it helps with all kinds of fear, stress, anxiety, trauma, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it because it helps with all the memories and all the things you don't remember anymore that you've blocked away so, so hard. Mm. Okay, without wanting to, of course. To yes. protect yourself yes. um, but it also we can also go into the other direction of giving hope building confidence building resilience mm. um, opening you up to the new possibilities which is one thing I love to do with people because they're they're always so stuck in that one small situation and just being in that moment getting into that calmer state um for a moment letting go of everything that's going on mm -hmm. and having a peek at what's possible and feeling it what's possible makes such a difference and the way it works is it works on the amygdala which is where all your trauma is st uh, stored and as you know when a trigger well when something happens it gets triggered mm -hmm. and you restart that same reaction over and over and over and over again yeah. like i did for yeah let's say 46 years on end yeah, yeah. i enhanced and confirmed that same reaction yeah. until yeah. just to give you an example i could not look at my phone anymore out of horror and total anxiety and panic attacks of that phone that might ring mm. and it yeah. might be that one person or someone might send me a text. And when you look at that objectively, it's totally ridiculous. That phone is not going to hurt me. No. 
but in me that connection had been made between those people and there's neurological stuff yeah yes and through yeah. the healing i finally was able to disconnect this connection so this was your recipe to yeah. this you has been my well together with everything else i do with the whole lifestyle mm. and the new well starting your business but Evening is what I use to get you through the blocks, wow. through the trauma, through, and basically calm you down in the moment. Mm. And the so you feel it, it you feel it directly. You feel yeah. directly the. Well, if you well, you can do it on your face. Mm. It's a gentle stroking, and you can do it from your shoulders to your arms or with your hands. Mm. And by doing these movements, you create delta waves. And when a trauma is registered, it's registered with a certain kind of waves and those delta waves counteract it. Hmm. And when we get to that root cause, to that moment it was encoded in your amygdala, through those waves, we dissolve that memory. Well, okay. the negative part of the memory, you will still yes, remember yes. That, if that thing happening. But all the anxiety, all the fear, everything that was built onto that is neutralized. And it opens you up both in your mind and in your body. You just feel so much relieved. It's like a big scoop of yucky stuff <laughs> that's taken mm -hmm. out. So it connects with your body, your mind's always connected, but it cleans it all up. So when you yeah. take your phone again after so much time, it it's yeah, my phone is here and I can look <laughs> at it now, <laughs> um, which before I couldn't. Mm. There were days I had to hide my phone in a place I couldn't see it. And you thought, <laughs> I have to share this with my clients or I will go in a new business or something like that. It helps, really? you, it helps you to take that decision to go in a new business to share this knowledge. I don't understand the question. Is, is that true that that is evening, evening that, that you learned, you want to share with your clients? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, um, mm. I, I love using this tool mm. as a way to yeah, get your results a lot quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. It's also a kind of energy work. Actually, yeah. when you talk about waves, etc., you know, it's it's a yeah. it's a neurological thing, but also with with ener with energy, it's mm -hmm. super interesting. Yeah, I, I mix up a whole lot of things with it. Yeah, in the moment, whatever feels best for that person, that situation, that moment. Yeah, and thank uh, you for sharing. I think it's very interesting stuff. Uh, I, I will look at the internet about it. I think it's. I have this card for you. It is daredevil. It's oh, yeah. prediction. <laughs> It's the devil and it's the dare. And uh, yeah. What about you? Do, do you, are you? How are you now with this anxiety? Did you think I'm completely uh, relieved, uh, healed? Uh, or is she sometimes there, this daredevil? She has also light side, um, shadow side. Oh, she's there. Hmm. But she's still tiny. Yes. But there, there are times she's bigger. Mm -hmm. and then things happen mm -hmm. and then yeah i as we all move up in our spiral of life mm -hmm. um yeah sometimes we get those same cir circumstances come back up in our life mm -hmm. see how we react to it mm -hmm. and oh i can definitely see a very different reaction mm -hmm. but right. sometimes when yeah when I haven't been <laughs> practicing what I preach and I'm tired. Yes, yeah. And that happens. And a lot of things happen at the same time. Mm. Or COVID happens. Mm -hmm. That gets all triggered again. Yeah. But it's a, it's a great learning experience. And just knowing what to do in those moments. Mm -hmm. Having the tools and the experience of knowing that you've, you've healed yourself before. Mm. And it builds, it builds confidence that okay, today is a really yucky day, mm. but instead of wallowing in it for three weeks, now maybe it's half a day. 
Yeah, great. And great to hear. Thank you for explaining this because this fear is so special. It can be positive, it can be negative. A bit of fear, uh, fear of failure can be very helpful a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mind fear. I, 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 I don't like all the people who are talking about um, fighting fear and overcoming fear and, uh, and the fear warriors. And you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't feel it works that way. It's part of your life. It's part oh, of sure. who you are. Sure, sure. And of course, it's not the intention that it takes over mm. too much. No, I, no yeah. I think it's interesting with this archetype. You have a light side and a shadow side. And yeah, we, we look to both of them. It, it's good that you embrace also the negative sides and the shadow side. Yeah. Yeah, just accept it that today, or in this moment, I'm crying my eyes out. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just There's a also a lot about acceptance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. 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 Embrace. I was. I was the fighter. My goodness. I fought everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the warrior. The a real warrior. Yes. Yeah. The love warrior. <laughs> the warrior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. fighting everything that didn't need to be fought, mm -hmm. and moving into that calmer state of reducing the stress, reducing the fear, reducing the anxiety, mm. gets you into, into that place where you're able to accept. Yes. But do you have an advice for people uh, who are watching this show about this fear? Because I know in America they're listening, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of counseling also. Yeah. Do you have an advice for them? How to go, how to deal with this not this fear but more the anxiety because it's a real problem yeah um one of the things i use is a well the box i have it over there and you can take any box yes and um what i put into that box is all kinds of cards cards and things that will bring a positive memory or mm. something that will empower yeah. me. Yeah, a memory box. I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. And in that box are all kinds of little, little cards. Mm -hmm. And you can see, really see the evolution in those cards as you grow. And in that moment of total anxiety, at some point, it gets a bit less. Mm. And at that moment, you're able to think or when you look around because when i find when that anxiety is really really overwhelming taking over everything mm -hmm. it blocks your hearing your sight everything and at yeah. the same time you're super sensitive to every sound to everything you see mm -hmm. kind of dual and then in that moment i start looking around i see that box and i just flip through that box mm -hmm. and one of those things well, I did. Now I, I, I just know very quickly what to do. But back in the earlier times, yeah. look into that box and see, okay, do this, do that. Um, yeah. Boil an egg is one of the things I recommend to Boil people. Yeah. yeah, it's really yeah. an other focus. Do something. Yeah. And it's so important to have a reminder of that because you're so overwhelmed by that whole situation or you're crying and, and your mind is repeating what just happened. Mm -hmm. I would have that with those phone calls, for instance. Um, even when I had missed a phone call, the total anxiety of that, mo that I had missed that phone call, what they would be thinking mm -hmm. and me trying to survive between that moment and the time I would have to call back because I, I still thought back then that I had to call back. Mm. That's and your that program in your head. It's your habit to be polite, to be the good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then I developed that whole system of having that box. And one of those things said, boil an egg. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I like this. Yeah. I think it's very helpful. Yes. Very if helpful. eggs are something you're afraid of, if you try to do that exercise of boiling an egg, but back in the day you had a traumatic experience with a chicken or an egg or, or someone threw eggs at you, then don't do that. 
figure out something else. Yes. But the thing is to only boil an egg and really bring it down to like you would be writing a program for a robot. Yeah. As in, you're sitting here right now. You're going to get off the chair and you can really go into real detail of mm. put your left foot on the ground and that whole process of walking from here to the kitchen mm. and reaching into the fridge mm. taking that egg mm. feeling the cold of that egg putting it maybe on the counter taking a casserole mm. that whole process yeah, yeah, yeah. i like met a combination a... of mindfulness and and yeah. slowing down that's nice that you tell me i met a, a, another coach in netherlands this week and she's a, a mindful um, baker and she makes mindful uh, give workshops with burnout people and do this making this yeah give them a recipe and that's what I know, uh, that, that when you're going to bake, you have to measure things. You, you, you can't make any sorrow or be anxiety, you have your anxiety. So mm -hmm. I think it's a very good one. It's also like because you only can have one thought at the yeah. same time. Eh? Yeah. Well, I have to add, I, I love the example of, of cooking something. But for me, in that moment, that would be too difficult. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't yeah. be able to focus. No. No, that's and the problem. Of fibromyalgia, yeah. my hands and my whole body would be hurting like crazy. Yeah. And mm. I wouldn't even be able to, for instance, hold that recipe book. Mm. But I am very happy for you that you found this solution uh, to make mm -hmm. a program for other people and help other people. It really sounds like your mission. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. love helping people. Yeah. Whatever situation they're at. Mm. So many people are struggling. Oh yeah, I believe that. Mm -hmm. And they the just bucket is so full. <laughs> <laughs> the bucket is how it like it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Annelies, do you have some uh, cards for her? Yeah. Well, Claudia, we we had already a small introduction uh, yesterday, so maybe there's one of those archetypes you would like to meet. Um, here I we heard already the serpent, but you turned already the, also the serpent in a positive way. Eh? Before it was really serve you still serve others, but now from a more positive view maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's up up to you here. What what, what kind of? Uh, yesterday we talked about the key keeper as well. Yeah, I'd I'd uh, love to explore and, that part. And, and you, uh, yeah, because you probably <laughs> hold the key. The the yeah, visionary. because Claudia, oh, the visionary. Yeah, but Claudia also really keeps the key for, um, mm -hmm. like when you, when you do not have a solution, you know, you can come with this anxiety or fear. Maybe you you stand in front of a closed door, but you show people that there are still opportunities. That's beautiful. So yeah, yeah that's um, so you are really a key keeper for people. Like hey, you know, you are deep now, but you know, no, that there is a key. There is a key. There is a key for a solution. Yeah. yeah. So I really, one of the slogans I use is that my coaching is for those people who believe or want to believe that anything is possible. Yeah, exactly. I so like wonderful. that. Yeah. So, so I suggest we do, we do this uh, imagination with the key keeper and. Uh, okay for yeah. you. Yeah. All right. 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 Okay. So what we do is um, I put my feet on the ground and the hands on top of, of, the, of my legs. It is possible, I should, I should say also because the watchers can do this imagination with us, but uh, I will ask you some questions, Claudia, and, and so you can answer so I can go into your story. Um, we go for the ski keeper, but it might be that an other person shows up. So that can, that, that's, that can be. So it means that, that that other person has then a message for you. So we go for the ski keeper, but, but if it's another kind of figure, we, we will find out. Okay? Great. So are you ready? Good. Let it flow. Yeah, <laughs> let it flow. So inhale and exhale. And when you inhale, you really can take the energy from the ground through your body. 
towards the stars. And when you exhale, really from the stars, through your body, into the ground. And we go with our attention from our head towards our nose. From our nose towards our mouth. From our mouth towards our throat. And from your throat towards a place around your heart. Where it's really comfortable. It's a safe place what only belongs to you. You can wrap yourself with a blanket or get yourself a cup of tea. From there we go towards your inner kingdom. It's like you're in a theater play and the curtains go aside and that you step into your own inner kingdom. And in this kingdom you are a king or a queen, a little prince or princess. And my question to you is to describe what you see. I'm actually on stage in a theater and I'm looking out over the whole area filled with all seats. It's completely empty. It's like it's a trial run or something. It's completely empty, you say. It's like a dress rehearsal. And can you see yourself as a king or a queen or a prince or princess? I would say a prince. I'm standing in the middle of the stage. Mm -hmm. and the curtains opens. And I'm standing there. With confidence. With confidence. And what do you say is possible to step into a kingdom? Kind of your own fairy tale? Oh, yeah. I just went through a, a time portal. A tiny portal? Yeah, like a time portal where you step into another reality. Oh, another reality, yes. Sorry, time portal, yes. And where do you... And I see woods and like all the tops of the trees, like a huge pine trees, but rounded pine trees. Mm -hmm. Like you look, look over the Amazon. So big forest. And is there somewhere a castle or a palace? I'm walking in between the trees and I see all kinds of animals. Mm -hmm. is, there a place awesome. where, is there a place maybe you, you would like to sit down? Yeah, there's like a waterfall with a, a big pond of water and it's beautiful there with rocks around it. Mm -hmm. it's so and is this the place to meet the key keeper? Hmm. There's fear in me. The moment you ask that question, there's really big fear in my stomach. You're anxious. But it's like more apprehensive, like, yeah. Yeah, oh, I like this, this kind of joy, joy feel like this other kind of anxiety yeah so what if you just sit down and relax at the waterfall and ask if the key keeper can approach you 
Yeah, we're swimming, the both of us. Mm. That's fun. We're like mermaids, but without a tail. Okay. Is the male or female? I'm not sure, but the person has long hair and I kind of feel more a female connection, so. Mm -hmm. And is she familiar to you? She's like my other half. Yeah, like I know you already for a long time. Yeah, it's like we're, we're giggling about the same stuff and we're mm -hmm. <laughs> And can you ask her why, why she's there for you? So I'm not alone. Can you rely on her? She's more like a partner, like an equal partner. And with this key, can she open a certain door with it? Oh yeah, we're going behind the waterfall and there's a cave and a big door that we're opening. Is this your treasure room? It might be, but it's, it's like it's still a bit hidden. It's like there's a fog. Hanging, hanging in there that prevents me from really seeing it, mm -hmm. touching it. And if we would invent or ask the enlighter to come to shine a light, to light up the dark or the fog. Oh yeah, oh that helps. The whole room lights up. Now I can see. It's big. It's really with dark walls. It's like a fantasy cave from a, a sultan or something. Hmm. Can you see treasures? Yeah, it's, it's stacked one on top of the other, boxes and, and shiny jewelry, rocks and... So it just might have, could be that you just have found your hidden treasure. The thing is, I'm not stepping inside. I'm looking at it, but I'm not approaching. Mm -hmm. And what is needed to approach it? Is there a barrier? Or do you need some encouragement? <laughs> Someone just kicked me in the butt. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I see it. <laughs> and now I'm looking around and touching it. And how does it feel? I'm afraid to own it. 
It's so new. So I keep touching it and kind of giving it love. Well, uh, yes, I can say thank you to the enlighter, to the key keeper, to the person who gave you a kick in the butt. Yeah, I'm sitting at, at the back of the room now and looking at the entrance. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, this is this is mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it is yours. So you just know that you can come back anytime you want and that you will meet them again. I'm still in total awe. It's like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's yours, so you can come back anytime. That's so nice. It's such a nice place. It's always there for you and when you're ready you can slowly come back. It's right here. It's not really in here but it's like right here. <laughs> there you are again. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> now was it what uh, Annelies did with you? take you on that beautiful journey. I love it. I, I really, uh, I told you already, I'm fascinated by the whole process. And it is and fascinating. And the parts that you pick that are so spot on. Mm -hmm. And that whole journey is so friendly and loving and mm -hmm. so nice to my sensitive soul. Mm. Yeah. It was beautiful to see you and you want to stay there. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. Great. It's, it's, it feels like you've been away for a long time, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's so special. It only takes yeah. a few minutes. It's like I've been out and about for two years traveling the world. Yeah. 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 I know. That's exactly. Yes. <laughs> Tell me that too. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Please, you did very well. And thank you for being here. We really enjoyed the interview. Yeah, me and, too. Uh, yeah. All and you for know. your story and your power and yeah, open, your, your, openness. your openness and braveness. And yeah, really. With pleasure. I really hope that the viewers can can relate and can take away some bits and pieces to apply in their own lives. Oh yeah, I I'm really uh, sure yeah. of that. So thank you again. It was uh, great to have you here and hear <laughs> about your method. And uh, well, maybe uh, I always cross in another again, but we will uh, put your uh, website also on screen when we okay. have this show and uh, well, Wish you all the best in Spain. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Much. Glad to have been here on the show and uh, I'll leave you. <laughs> yes. And uh, we'll yes, soon again. Yeah. Speak yeah. Soon. Thank you very okay. much. Bye. 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 There we are again. Uh, thank you, Claudia, for this wonderful interview. And thank you for the watchers. And thank you, Annelies, for this wonderful imagination with this key keeper. How wonderful it was to be in this treasure room. What happened, Annelies? Can you give some information what has happened? 
Jawel, um, Claudia met uh, the key keeper mm -hmm. as a kind of mermaid mm -hmm. and they were swimming together. And then suddenly I just asked like the key is, you know, the key is there to open the door. So, and <clears throat> it seemed that there was a hidden treasure room behind the waterfall. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was for her the first time that she met this treasure room. So it was a wonderful meeting for her with this inner treasure room to see all the gold and the treasures that were there for her. And it was so new that for her, it was, she could, even could not believe that, it's, that it belonged to her. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can I and it's what, that's what with most of us happens when we enter it for the first time, this treasure room, that it's so new that like, what's this? Yes. What is going on? And, and, and what I saw, she wants to stay there. It was a really a fantastic place to be there in your own yes. treasure room and to aim this and to claim this and to own this. Yeah, it's really big fun to be there. Yes. It gives you a lot of information. And I love this imagination to connect with your archetypes and these money archetypes. I really like to show you these archetypes, uh, the box, like this. And uh, also the other odd box from the archetypes with these dragons. There are a lot of dragons on each treasure box, but we have to take that key, and we did today with the key keeper. Yes, we did How with the key wonderful. keeper. Yes. 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 Yeah. And I love this imagination because it was in the water with a, with a mermaid, also one of the archetypes. And she opened it, and there she could see all her inner treasures. So thank you, Claudia, to be here with us, and thank you for the watchers. Next week we will be there on Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Till next time. Till next time.